This is the 5 litre beer keg worm bin that I set up for my granddaughter 10 months ago. She's now ready to move on to managing a bigger worm bin all by herself. So let's take one final look at this worm bin and see how it's performed over the last 10 months. There's a worm on the lid. There's always a worm on the lid. Lots of castings on the lid and on the inside walls of the bin. So the worms have been moving around quite a lot. There's a fair bit of moisture on the sides as well. And just looking at it, the um, contents seem very wet. That's scraps from the last feeding, which was a few weeks ago. This bin doesn't need feeding every few days because there's such a small amount of worms in the bin that a very small quantity of food lasts a long time. One of the things we look at is the total amount of worms at the end, just to see what the population of worms looks like. Now this beer keg, it's a 5 litre in volume, but it's 15 centimetres diameter. And what that means is, is the surface area of the bin is 176 centimetres, pi r squared. Now if you compare that to the tray in the worm tower, they're 40 centimetres by 40 centimetres. So the surface area of the trays is 1,600 square centimetres. The surface area that the worms have to work on in this keg is 176 centimetres. So it's a huge difference. One of the things that I find very interesting about worms is the way in which they regulate the population based on the space and the food that they have available. And you'll see that towards the end of this video. I mentioned in the two month update how wet the keg was inside so I said I was going to put some holes in the bottom for drainage. Those two holes were actually too small. I should have put more holes in because the contents are very wet. Although it doesn't seem to have bothered the worms in the slightest. They look very healthy. They're very active. That's cardboard I added just to help absorb the moisture and they're eating the cardboard as well. On reflection, I think I definitely should have added more holes to the bottom of that keg. The worms in the bin are actually in great condition. These are all adult worms and most of the worms that I can see are adult worms. What I'm going to do now is sift through all of this and see how many worms we end up with. When I started this beer keg worm bin, I had three loosely formed objectives in mind. One was to encourage and deepen my granddaughter's interest in all things composting, especially composting with worms, gardening because we use the vermicompost in our containers to grow stuff. So I wanted to just keep that interest going. And if you watch my videos, you know I started her off with her own little one litre yogurt pot worm bin. She then progressed on to this five litre beer keg worm bin. She's passed all of her worm composting and maintenance exams and she's ready now to move on to her own 10 litre worm bin, which I'm going to set up and make with her soon. The second loose idea I suppose I had for the bin is to show that pretty much any container can be used as a worm bin. As long as the container is able to hold bedding and food, it allows air to circulate and excess moisture or water to drain and it's able to maintain a reasonable temperature. Pretty much any container can be used. I know worm bins, one of the things I think that puts people off worm bins is the, the commercially available ones is they're actually very expensive for what they are. So you don't need to go out and spend an awful lot of money to compost with worms almost any container and if you watched my small worm bin series you'll know that was a container that was I got for nothing off the council that they use used to recycle glass in. So you don't need to spend a whole heap of money to get composting with worms. And I suppose the final thing would be to show that worms will regulate their population based on the amount of space that they have and the food and the regularity of the food that they have. So we know we have a hundred and an area of a surface area of 176 centimetres. I think it's about the 20 centimetres or so deep that uh, beer keg. The, the total volume is 5 litres and if you look at the first video where I set this beer keg worm bin up you'll notice that the amount of worms I have now is pretty much the amount of worms I started with. In other words the population of worms reached optimum and they've maintained it at optimum for the given amount of space that they have. I'm really pleased with how well these worms look. They're vigorous, they're healthy, there's lots of activity in that little keg. 
most of them are adult worms there's there's a range a whole range there's a, a tiny tiny little worms that i would estimate to be a day or two old so it does appear that there's been cocoons hatching in it but most of them are juveniles very close to adulthood or actual adults when we refer to adults what we mean is worms that are able to reproduce and for that to take place they have a clitellum and most of the worms that I'm looking at in the bin they actually have the clitellum present which means they're able to reproduce their adults that's a better look now at a clitellum on one of the worms it's that raised ridge which is a few sections behind the head of an adult worm and I suppose this ties in with the worms regulating their own population. But what was really noticeable with this keg worm bin is the total lack of cocoons. I didn't notice a single one. And I normally have quite a good eye for spotting cocoons, but I didn't see one. As I sifted through a second time, just looking for any worms that I may have missed, I've seen that there's a whole, the, the full gamut of, of worms at the various stages of development is there, from worms that have clearly recently uh, hatched from a cocoon, right through to the adult worms. And most of the worms are quite large juveniles, not quite adult yet, and adults. So I suppose it, it does tie in with this idea of them regulating their own population. There's obviously, the, the space is quite limited. There's obviously a large amount relative to the space of adult worms. They're obviously able to easily find each other. So there's not a problem reproducing. And yet I can't see a single cocoon when there's a certain amount of die-off certain a certain number of cocoons will be laid but i found that really interesting that there's not a single cocoon in this keg so that's it for the beer keg worm bin it's worked absolutely brilliantly the worms have been very happy in it it does show you can use just about any container to make a worm bin and make your own vermicompost the worms are healthy They've got a nice volume of body on them. They're lively. They've clearly been very happy in the worm bin. So these guys now will either start another worm bin or they'll, they'll go into one of the bigger worm bins. I might send them on a little bit of a holiday to Melon Camp for a little while. They've worked very hard for us in that little keg. I hope you enjoyed these. I think I've only made three videos on the, on the uh, worm keg. But I hope you check out the videos. I hope you enjoyed it. So Miss Sprinkles will move on to managing her own 10 litre worm bin now, which I'll make with her and we'll, we'll put a video up about that sometime in the future. But for now, as always, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Bye.